Hello, this is Ron Clark. You are listening to Lesson 1 in the Magic of yod vav adonai I learned the magic of yod vav adonai several years ago. I find it to be a very potent discipline, one that has greatly forwarded my own evolution. And so I make it my gift to you, in the hope that it will forward your personal evolution as well. One problem with the printed version is that many readers are in the dark as to the proper pronunciation. But with this recording, that problem is now overcome. Since the question of how to pronounce the canticle properly is the most frequent question, that is where I will begin. Ani yod he vav he Adonai Ribbon o Shalom Amen. That is the proper pronunciation, tonality, and rhythm. Let's break it down into the five component breaths. The first breath is Ani. Ani. This Hebrew word, spelled Aleph Nun Yod, means I am. The speaking begins with your lowest natural tone and rises smoothly to end with your highest natural note. Ani. You should hold the final Yod until your breath is fully spent. The second breath is Yod He Vav He. Yod He Vav He. This is the so-called unspeakable name of God in the Jewish tradition. Thus we speak it as four separate letters subsumed by a single breath. Each letter should take up about one quarter of your exhale, and each is spoken at your highest natural note. In other words, the same note you ended with on your first breath. Thus, Ani yod he vav he. The third breath is Adonai. Adonai. This Hebrew word, spelled Aleph, Daleth, Nun, Yod, translates into English as Lord, and is the spoken substitute for the unspeakable name Yod He Vav He. However, in Kabbalah, Adonai is a specific title and is not just a substitute for Yod He Vav He. Often it modifies the Yod He Vav He, and we arrive at Yod He Vav He Adonai or even see the two combined into Yadonai. Adonai is given the same tonality as the Ani. Ani, Adonai. Both begin at your lowest natural tone and rise to your highest. Adonai, however, has three syllables instead of Ani's two, so the Don of Adonai is spoken very briefly and the Yod is extended. The Aleph is what rises upward along the scale, and both the Don and the Yod are spoken at the highest note. Thus, Adonai. The fourth breath is the phrase, Ribono Shel Olam. Ribono Shel Olam. This Hebrew phrase translates into English as, Master unto the ages, or alternately, master of the universe. The universe in this case is the entire temporal realm, so I prefer unto the ages over of the universe. The first word of this phrase, Rabono, means master, but not in the slave driver sense. You will note that it shares the same Hebrew root as the word rabbi, and this is the sort of mastery implied here. Rabono is set at your highest note, which is where you left off in the third breath at the end of Adonai. Adonai, Ribono. Speaking Ribono should expend one quarter of your fourth breath. The second word in this phrase is shell. Shell. It also expends one quarter of your breath. Shell means unto or of thee and is spoken at your lowest natural tone. Thus, Adonai, Ribbon no Shell. The third and final word in this phrase is Olam. Olam. 
It consumes the final half of your fourth breath, and is spoken at a middle range tone. It is the only word in the entire canticle spoken at this tone. Thus, Rabbon Shel Olam. The fifth and final spoken breath is the word Amen. Amen. This is a common ending for prayer in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Its meaning and the philosophy behind it, however, are very complex. Its simplest translation into English is truth, but it also means faith. It's composed of the letters Aleph, Mem, Nun, and has two syllables. Therefore, it is spoken exactly the same as the opening Ani, with each syllable receiving equal breath. Thus, Amen. So, let's put it all back together. Ani. Inhale. Yod he vav he. Inhale. Adonai. Ribono shell alarm. Inhale. Amen. Let's try it together. Speak with me this time. Ani Yod he vav he. Adonai Ribono Shell Alam Amen. And again, Ani Yod He Vav He. Adonai Ribbon of Shell Alam Amen. And one final time. Ani Yod He. Adonai Ribbon of Shell Alam Amen. Very well. This ends Lesson One. I suggest that you practice pronouncing the canticle until it comes easily until you achieve the proper pronunciation, tone, and rhythm automatically. Only then should you move on to Lesson 2 and begin learning the three-part Kabbalistic speaking of the canticle. This has been Ron Clark. My best to you.